I've been silently testing a slew of Joy-Cons, waiting for one good enough to bring to the attention of my audience, and I found one that got me genuinely tickled and excited because it's the two-year upgraded or enhanced version of the Athena, which I tested back in April of 22 and was blown away with. I believe the title of that video was Better Joy-Cons Than Nintendo for $30 Cheaper. Definitely stand by that sentiment. NYXI has been listening to the feedback of the gaming community, making small revisions to their Joy-Cons. I skipped over the Athena. This is the Pro with Hall Effect thumbstick modules that should be virtually stick drift proof. And I genuinely hope you stick around for the whole review so you can find out why this and one other model from NYXI are the only two in the lineup that I truly recommend in 24. Let's get it. Welcome aboard, Stallion or Stallionette. Over 200 gamepads tested, not letting off the throttle. Controller looking like a model. Reviews go down smooth, pass me the bottle. I got paddles, back to the lobby with a waddle. Gaming news, gear reviews, more controllers than you can use. A man of many faces, recording by the smoke and aces. I wasn't born the controller captain, it was you bucking broncos that made it happen. Enough input delay, this video is slapping. A quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this controller was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any cons, shortcomings, or areas of improvement, you're gonna hear about it, so these companies make better products over time. Despite the fact Christmas had passed three weeks prior, I did have this outer sleeve on the Hyperion White version, but it just lifts up like this, a little outer sleeve, and then you have the identical box here. Now, we do have two of the mini colorways available here today. Well, hold on, allow me to interject there, Sailor. You were confused, which means a lot of other gamers are gonna be confused as well. Those models I have laid out on the desk, believe it or not, because I didn't believe it just from looking at the two of them because they look identical, and the title of the models are almost identical. Those are two different different game pads, you silly sucker. You got the Hyperion, which is $57. And then for $5 more, you got the Hyperion Pro. And what's professional about it? Because at the end of the day, these are almost the same set of Joy-Cons. One big old fat difference there, Buster. These have the Magnetic Hall Effect thumbstick modules that are virtually stick drift proof. But I feel like there's other component differences from the Athena and the Hyperion over here. The D-pad feels substantially different. The face buttons feel different. Just little things that I think could be mentioned in this little diagram. But since they're not, they'll be mentioned in this review. Here's a quick rundown, a buyer's guide on NYX Eye controllers. If you do want a full-size gamepad, linked in the description below is a review of the NYX Eye Chaos, which is their full-size offering. Comes in white and black and goes for around $40 on Amazon. So many good gamepads have come out for the Switch over the last two years, and I simply can't recommend that gamepad anymore, even if I did recommend it during the initial review. Same thing with the Athenas over here. These are great, but they've been replaced by the Hyperion and then replaced again by the Hyperion Pro, so why not just spend a couple of more ducats and not have buyer's remorse down the road by getting the latest and greatest. And the latest and greatest actually has substantial upgrades such as Hall Effect joystick. So you're probably not gonna get stick drift unless that recentering spring goes out on you. So as of now, there is only two models in the lineup from NYXI that I do recommend, that being the NYXI Wizard, which is an awesome GameCube layout controller, which I have reviewed on the channel. Had almost nothing but good things to say about that $70 joint. And then the set that we're reviewing today, the Hyperion Pro at 63 Bones, which unfortunately is not not sold on Amazon, but the NYXI website listing is linked in the description below alongside an exclusive discount for my audience. I believe it's 10 percentile because they look out for the stallions and stallionettes. And along those lines, since I was a little bit confused about the different color options, the different themes available, it's only purple and green. So this is the green variant that we are not reviewing here today. But if you want the standard Hyperion non-pro edition, they come in these three color variants, as well as a translucent or clear that is not here for some reason. You are going to notice the center section is going to be painted to match the controller on the blue variant. However, if you get the white, the clear, or the black, you are going to have this flat matte black center section, which does have four LED indicators letting you know what player you are, and it does have these tracks to snap in, obviously. This is if you want to use it like a singular full-size gamepad as opposed to two separate Joy-Cons. There is limitations to using these. I would rather just use an actual Switch Pro controller. You want your Joy-Cons to also be a full-size controller for you? This is perfect. I really don't like this presentation because no matter which way you open the box, something is going to be spilling out. I have them upside down, but if you open it the other way, most likely this clear tray is going to pop off and your Joy-Cons are going to go spilling out onto your desk. You do have your instruction manual, pamphlet, or brochure, which we'll look at in just a mo, and a budget parts bin special USB-C cable, about mm, two feet, with a throwaway bread bag tie, no dust covers, this is rubber, not microfiber or braided, this is literally just for charging, and despite the fact I am generally a big old fan of the white and black two-tone Stormtrooper thing going on, 
Ah, uh, this looks a little bit bland in comparison to the blue variant because you have that yellow right analog stick, which is a little throwback to the GameCube controller. But you also have these really cool translucent crystal jewel face buttons, which I have to say look very nice. X and Y are the same blue, and then you got traditional A and B coloration. And you do have this little bar on each Joy-Con for LED light. Another cosmetic reason to opt for the blue or any of the color variations that have these translucent buttons is the fact that light actually glows through them and it's actually sunken in. The camera doesn't really pick it up straight on. In fact, it looks like those face buttons are right there on the surface level, but they're actually really deep in that jewel. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You can see from that angle. You do also have some RGB lighting around the outside of the thumbstick gates, which kind of does work as an anti-friction ring when you're at full lock. The instruction manual pamphlet or brochure opens up dummy huge, but what's not huge and actually pretty Paquito is going to be the font, the lettering, very tiny. So if you don't have the eyes of an eagle, you're pressed up against the parchment. And you might be thinking to yourself, wow, there's probably a lot of helpful information and diagrams packed into that manual. Uh, au contraire, mon frere. There's a surplus of languages because this is a multinational controller. This is your instructions for each country. Just one little placard. You got your Deutsch version the Schnagenwind. Pretty atrocious, but you don't need this because you got me. You don't ha have me. I don't belong to you, but instruction manuals are unnecessary for you because you have the Gamer Heaven YouTube channel. As for ergonomics or comfort, as with going with any larger Joy-Con, this is going to be ergonomically a lot more comfortable than the Stalker, which is great for portability, but uh, that's about it. Reason being, you've got these large palm grips, which is very reminiscent of a full-size controller. You do also have this diamond pattern cut in there, which is a little bit of stippling for grip. Mm, and it does actually feel quite nice. Then you do have two rear buttons sunk damn near flush with the rear shell, which does not cut into comfort negatively at all. One downside to these rear buttons and rear buttons on any Joy-Con, in fact, I have an entire video about it, is the fact that unlike a normal pro controller where you can bind pretty much anything on the front of your controller to pretty much anything on the back of your controller, since these are two separate controllers and they do not communicate with each other, you can only bind things on the right Joy-Con to that rear button and things on the left Joy-Con, like the D-pad, to that rear button. But ergonomically, this is how I hold my Switch. Just, well, actually looks like I've got some fucked up fingers. Just holding it like a normie, like a normal dude. Also, if you're ever holding your tablet out one-handed like this, these larger Joy-Cons are a little bit better for weight distribution. And when you're holding it normally two-handed, they are a huge step up for comfort. I'm going to give comfort on these particular Joy-Cons a 9 out of 10, but I still left that one point because, you know, because there's still room for perfection. Another note, because not all aftermarket Joy-Cons allow you to do this, and that is the fact that these do have Bluetooth, so you are able to disconnect these and use these wirelessly, and they also do have the motion sense aiming, so if you want to use these for chopping wood in a Zelda game or something, or just prop the tablet up like that with the little kickstand in the back and use the center section to make one big gamepad out of this, or just hold one in each hand, you can do that. Perceived build quality is approached a little bit different than a typical gamepad because all Joy-Cons feel a little bit cheap as fuck. Not only are they freakishly light because they're two individual controllers, but generally the plastics used on Switch controllers, not only the full-size gamepads, but definitely Joy-Cons is a little bit cheap, hollow, tinny, flimsy, and not very confidence inducing or making you feel like you've got a high quality, well-built game bad. But I will say just inspecting it visually, there is no major panel gaps where the front and rear shell meet. Sliding this on and off the tablet through the tracks didn't feel unsecure and there is no side-to-side -side play like the Lenovo Legion Go when you move the Joy-Cons back and forth. But no particular part screams out to me, I'm not going to last more than a couple of clicks. And if you do have any issues, there is one year of warranty coverage with all Inwax I products. I almost said controllers but they also sell other stuff like Switch accessories. I recently beat Red Dead Redemption on the Switch going back and forth between what had been my daily driver for the last couple months. This set of Joy-Cons has yet to be reviewed on the channel and may not be considering these NYXIs are better in my opinion, so I review something that I've used and deem subpar. This is based on several components. The first one is going to be the D-pad or direction buttons, which matters a whole hell of a lot in a lot of Switch games because there's a vast library of retro platformers in NSO or Nintendo Switch Online, such as Sega Genesis and the NES. And a lot of those games, you're not going to be using the analog stick to move. You're going to be using the D-pad, which feels completely sloppy with this membrane switch. Your inputs kind of bleed together and you do not get any kind of a tactile response or feedback. Plastics used aren't phenomenal and it's just a big mushy bowl of mashed potatoes. These are thumbstick caps, by the way, which will be getting transferred over to here. Super awesome looking. Now the D-pad on the Hyperion feels mechanical because it is so tactile, clicky, tight, meaning as soon as I provide input, it is actuated, but still has a good resistance where you're not going to accidentally get any inputs. Plastics used are mad, give them about a 6 out of 10, but I've got to say the actuating force and the general feel of this D-pad is unmatched. 9 out of 10.
Cool, on the floor is where it belonged. As for the face reaction buttons, I do love the way they look, being those jewels with a nice 3D depth effect where they're sunken in. Also do love the fact that they light up and you can dim or disable that, but they don't feel very good. They are a membrane switch. I don't have any issue with size and spacing, but I will say they're raised pretty far from the front shell and it makes it feel a little bit awkward when you're pressing them. But I have no complaints with the face or action buttons and they are fully serviceable. I'm going to give them a 6 out of 10. Now as for the accessory button suite, all aftermarket Joy-Cons always do some silly shit with the turbo and additional buttons, putting them down here at the bottom, which the Hyperion does as well. And I really don't like that. Any of these turbo or additional functions should be bound to the back, which I know they still have two buttons back here, but just, just keep it going. Keep hole punching them down. There should be no additional buttons on the front that confuse you from the actual gameplay buttons, like the plus, minus, home button, and screen capture. But these aren't nearly as efficient of this model, which actually flash a little red LED light every time you use the rear button, which was uh, obnoxious to say the least. Then you do have USB-C ports in the bottom, which isn't cosmetically the most pleasing, but uh, where else are you going to plug them into charge? You know what I mean? These work, and other than having to dislocate your thumb to reach the turbo and additional buttons down here, accessory button suites decent, 7 out of 10. But what's better than decent is going to be these thumbsticks, analog sticks, front niblets, giblets, doodads, micrads. Primary reason for that being these are magnetic Hall Effect thumbstick modules that are virtual virtually stick drift proof, you shouldn't get it for the lifetime of this controller. Something else will break on it. The battery will stop taking a charge or one of these face buttons will get stuck in before you start getting the dreaded drift. Furthermore than that, you do have anti-friction rings so you'll glide along smooth plastic when you're at full lock. On the outside of your thumbstick gates, I do not like the rubber or silicone compound used that almost feels like hard plastic, not even rubber. It is slick as snot. The outside attempts to have some kind of diamond stippling pattern cut in to provide some grip, but it, it simply does not. Yeah, these don't feel great and I strongly advise anyone watching to slap on a little pair of control freaks or some thumbstick cap add-ons. Speaking of which, what fits? Xbox doesn't fit at all. PlayStation, if you don't give a shit about your stock thumbstick caps, you can force them on, literally bending the hell out of the outside. But what's going to be a winner, winner, chicken dinner is going to be the Nintendo Switch variants, which snap on with a minimal amount of force, do not rotate or wiggle. These fit perfectly. Something else I like about these thumbsticks is the fact that they are removable. You do have to use a good amount of strength, elbow grease to pop them off, especially the first couple of times because they are very firm on there. But you can pop them off and you do also have these additional rings. I'm going to leave this off the right and leave it on the left and see if there's any difference in the travel or range of motion. It really doesn't appear as if there's any benefit, any additional travel or range of motion from leaving that off and it actually does feel like ass. Without that metal ring gliding across that anti-friction ring, it actually feels a little bit more jagged with plastic on plastic. So just leave these little dishes on. Also, there's about 10% more resistance or strength required to move the thumbsticks as opposed to any Joy-Con set I've used, especially the stalkers, which I do really enjoy that increased tension. It's very reminiscent of something like the Xbox 360 controller or pro controllers such as the Elite Series 2 or a custom from Battle Beaver that offer increased thumbstick tension. Yeah, these feel real good. But a little warning to everyone watching because I have broken, that's right, th th this is now broken, this left analog stick trying to put the control freaks on, trying out the Xbox ones, which I knew were too tight, but, you know, doing my due diligence as a reviewer, tried to pop them on, and then when I went to pop them off, they kind of twisted, turned a little bit, and now this left analog stick, it works, but sometimes it stays in the direction I press it in, and I can't click in L3, this no longer does anything. So do be very careful when installing thumbstick caps. I would recommend popping the cap off first and then installing the control freak. Although sometimes that's not, not an option because these are really fucking hard to get off. Just be careful with these. It's now broken. So I guess I'll be going back to these. If you're ready to bump, then so am I, because we're talking about bumpers. They are going to be labeled, of course, and the plastics used are pretty garbage. They are incredibly slick. You don't have any grip up here with any stippling or dots. But my biggest complaint with these bumpers is the fact that you can actuate them pretty easily with the meat of your index finger by straightening out. But if you try and use the tip, it takes so much more strength because it's on a swivel or hinge mechanism. This ain't the place to be hitting the bumpers. As for the triggers, they are, of course, on or off. They are a button, not a analog squeeze with varying amounts of force so you can't modulate the throttle and brake in a racing game, but that's okay because Switch games are automatically programmed to have triggers that are just off or on, 0 to 100, and that's what these do. Not a fan of the plastics, there is no stippling or grip of any kind, but the actuation force is pretty much perfect as you get a nice distinct wall and then you break that wall, you push past it, and you actuate the Switch. It's also virtually silent, no complaints with the triggers here. I'm going to give them an 8 out of 10, the bumpers a 3 out of 10. As for the rear buttons, no Joy-Con rear buttons are phenomenal or even 
and good in my opinion, primarily because you can't bind anything on the left to anything on the right and vice versa, but also there's always going to be two. I have yet to see a pair of Joy-Cons with four rear buttons, two on each side, and they always share the same design. This one slanted oversized button on each side, which I will say the plastics do not feel phenomenal, but ergonomically I do like that this is flush with the rear shell so it's not sticking out like an old school paddle. It's not very loud when you actuate it, so I appreciate that. These feel a weird. The best way to describe it, there is virtually no pre-travel, so as soon as you press them, boom, there's no take up, it just actuates the button. But now that I've hit the button, as you can see, if I hold it down, it gets this weird extra, hmm, I don't know, eighth of an inch, couple millimeters of slop, dead in take up, does nothing. And I wish that could be eliminated somehow, but since this is membrane switch with a little rubber plunger mechanism under there, I guess it's always gonna feel a little bit squishy, but not like this. So actuating them feels fine, but unless you're light-handed, you're probably gonna continue to press the button in a little bit further and wonder why there's so much smushy mcgushy down here. The Fanny McRump ass inputs, I'm gonna go ahead and give them a four out of 10. Repeat, a four out of 10. Oh, wait, I forgot we were talking Switch Joy-Cons. It's an eight out of 10 for Switch Joy-Cons, but if we're comparing it to other premium custom and pro controllers, it'd be like a four out of 10 in the rear button department. On the NWAXI website in the support dropdown, you are gonna see upgrade firmware, and you might be a little bit curious, what the hell is this? Because I usually do recommend doing that initial update or patch, but if you're only gonna be using this on the Nintendo Switch platform, as a lot of you picking up this Joy-Con set are going to be doing, hmm, actually that's gonna be all of you because there is zero PC support with the set of Joy-Cons. Some Switch controllers do allow you to use them on PC, but generally it's the full-size ones that look like a normal Switch Pro controller. Generally, Joy-Cons just don't have PC compatibility. I even tried to force it into Switch mode to run my input lag or delay test or overclock or do any of the PC-centric stuff, but that's okay because this is a set of Joy-Cons. I would go ahead and skip this because these Joy-Cons were great right out of the box and you're not really going to get any benefit from going through this process to upgrade unless you're having issues and then, of course, run that update. As for the pros, cons, and verdict, let's start with the con shortcomings or limitations. First of all, I never advise using two Joy-Cons linked together with a plastic piece like this. The only way you can feel any ergonomically worse than this is by doing this with the stock Joy-Cons. The main reason being your hands are spaced out in a super weird way if you're used to a normal Xbox, PlayStation, or Switch Pro controller. And you can definitely tell that there's supposed to be a tablet or giant screen in the center because it feels simply off, for lack of a better word. Not really a con with this particular Joy-Con set, just a recommendation to my audience to only use these as Joy-Cons, either connected to the console or Bluetooth like this, schwack in the wood. The bumpers are very hard to hit in this swivel area, so if you have larger fingers, you might just go up and over and have a difficult time hitting these bumpers. The landing page looks pretty slick for this controller, and I will say this high-resolution breakout of the thumbstick module is cool. However, one thing that I'd love to see changed, but all controller manufacturers are going to continue to do this, is this little incorrect piece of information here. Is this little blatantly incorrect piece of information over here never developed drift in the lifetime of the controller? If you've been up and down the aisles of gamer heaven, you've walked this block before, then you do know that Hall Effect thumbstick modules can indeed get stick drift if the recentering spring goes out on you, which can and does happen. But since Hull Effect is the latest and greatest buzzword around controllers, this is not new. This isn't new. This is not new technology. The Dreamcast controller, which was around before a lot of you were born or invented, had a Hull Effect thumbstick module. That technology was ditched for a reason. And then in 2020 or so, Ghouly Kit released the King Kong 2 and individual thumbstick modules that were Hull Effect. And then from there, it's been crazy. Some good modules, some really bad ones, some ones you can buy on AliExpress press and calibrate yourself that are going to perform worse than potentiometer thumbsticks that you're used to. But that is the hype word right now is anti-stick drift, no drift, H-E, Hall effect. It, yeah. The Turtle Beach Stealth Ultra says right on the palm grips, anti-drift. So as much as I'd love to see this removed from the landing page, it simply isn't going to be because all these controller manufacturers are really riding that high of, we just put Hall effect modules in our controller. So let's let the world know that they're not going to get drift with our controller. Back to the cons, my boy. This does have wire Wireless, which some aftermarket Joy-Cons don't, meaning you can actually detach it from the tablet and use them like two individual controllers, swinging them around because they do have six axis gyro motion. They do also have turbo functionality for all buttons, vibration that's adjustable on the fly. But one feature you are going to notice is missing is a 
Amiibo support, so if you're trying to scan Amiibos, that doesn't work with the Pro. These accessory buttons are in a funky place and should be moved to the back shell, so they can't accidentally be confused with a functional game button, like plus, minus, screen capture. The bumpers are bad, for lack of a better word. If you want more information, jump back to the bumper section. The rear buttons felt meh during the rear button section, but now they're feeling a little bit meh, like not great because they feel really mushy. After you actuated them, there's a lot of just pushing in for no reason. There's a lot of travel, a lot of pushing in for no reason. You're just pushing into that rubber plunger of the membrane switch. The thumbstick material, this rubber silicone compound, trash. You're going to want to use thumbstick caps. The switch control freaks fit perfectly or get yourself some generic slipovers from Play Vital or Extreme Rate. Another con is this set of cons only sports a 500 milliamp hour battery, which gets you six and a half hours of playtime in best use case scenario, meaning lights off, turbo probably off. And there isn't really fast charging to speak of because two hours of charge time gets you back up to that six and a half hours. So your charge time is a third of your playtime. That's pretty damn subpar battery life. The vibration, also very lackluster. It has some pretty sloppy rumble force motors in there that make a pretty nasty <laughs> hollow sound rumbling around inside of these cheap thin plastics. And since this is the pro, the highest end variant from Inwox, I was kind of hoping that they put in some haptic feedback motors. You got your standard rumble force in there. Onto the pros, you have magnetic hull effect thumbstick modules that are virtually stick drift proof. Not completely stick drift proof like these manufacturers would like you to believe, but in reality, very, very unlikely that you are going to get stick drift. But if you do get drift on hull effect thumbstick modules, it is more than likely going to be after your one year of warranty coverage. So you would be kind of screwed at that point. Cosmetically, the green looks okay, but I think this purple looks really good with the multicolor face buttons and the yellow right analog stick. I just realized the lights were only on over here. It was kind of unbalanced in my hand. The D-pad is Mm, so sweet on this thing. And since the D-pad gets used frequently on the Switch, at least uh, I use it a lot on the Switch with the games that I play on that console. Fuck me. This is going to be a joy. So as for the verdict, you probably noticed that there's as many cons as there are pros or more of them. This is a good set of Joy-Cons, but if you're going to pick up an NYXI Joy-Con set, I would still recommend the Wizard if you can tolerate or you actually prefer the GameCube layout of face buttons. That controller has mechanical face buttons, not membranes, ergonomically feels better, has better feeling rear buttons, and on the whole, I think it feels a little bit better. Well, I'm glad we're spreckin' the same lingity. So the Athena Pro is a good set of Joy-Cons, but not great. The Wizard is a great set of Joy-Cons that came out about a year ago, and it'll also be linked in the description below. But I do feel like there's a better set of Joy-Cons out there. I just haven't found them yet, but I know they're out there, and I'm going to keep digging through the endless listings on Amazon because there are so many cheap, generic, usually pretty crappy Joy-Cons. But every once in a while, you dig up an absolute diamond in the rough, a needle in the haystack that has you jerking your needle every time you grab that controller, and I'm going to freaking find it, and I'm going to bring it to your doorstep. Judas Priest Barber is one of those flaming bags again. <laughs> Poop again. Make sure you subscribe because I am going to be comparing all Nintendo Switch controllers in the near future. All the good reputable ones. Drop in the comment section below your opinion of this controller and what you're using to play on Switch. But this is a good Switch controller. I do still prefer the Wizard. Both are linked down there in the description below alongside an exclusive discount for my audience. And I will see you stallions and stallionettes tomorrow. Peace. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So mollywop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow tomorrow.